you know, I'm a mama, so to I don't like to make judgments on how other people parent or what other people do, but this woman is vile and selfish and just mean. When mamas have their own issues and take it out on their children and scare them and try to hurt them and intentionally leave them, I have a problem. So I'm not liking her at all. I don't need to like the protagonist in every story, but I'm kind of wondering whether she she's just relaying things of how she's feeling at the moment, which are all selfish and vile and horrible. <laughs> so I'm wondering whether she has an epiphany or there's growth or there's something like that. Let's go take a photo. Let's hope so. We did a show and now I just so fuck it. <laughs> but I thought I would quickly show you um, what I bought at that two dollar. Everything is two dollar sale. I got five books here. So first up I bought Agatha Christie Agatha Christie because I've never read Agatha Christie before. Why not start with Murder on the Orient Express? Um Lionel Shriver because I've never read Lionel Shriver before. This is about um, a man receiving a gift from his past lover and his wife not being very happy about it. It's a little fella, it looks like a bit of fun. Ah, Chimamanda. You know, did not see any of her books before and now they're everywhere. This is her short story collection. Yeah. Um, and it was two bucks, so why not? Uh, Geraldine Brooks, because I've never read Geraldine Brooks before, and I'm a historical fiction fan, so how could I not have read Geraldine Brooks, is what everyone says to me. So, got this one. Um, and lastly, Jonathan Franzen, because I've never read Jonathan Franzen before. Um, and this is two bucks again. Um, so that's my haul. There are all the books I got. Ten bucks. Bargain. In between all of the beach and shows and stuff, I am still reading um, The Lost Daughter. Yesterday I said this book was about a woman dying. and I mean, I don't know where I got that plot from. I must have the wrong Eleanor Ferrante book. It's got nothing to do with And nobody's dying. It's just got to do with some crazy messed up woman who is the mother of two children and hasn't done a very good job of that. Um, I'm coming to the end. I am 30 pages from the end, so I'll let you know when I finish what I think. I need to lie down. It's been a big day. <laughs> okay, I just finished it. I've just got all these thoughts. My first thought is why, why write this story? What is the point of this story? Is this this is a story about a mother who abandons her kids. She abandons her kids while she's caring for them because she is vile and intentionally hurtful. And then she actually abandons her kids and goes away without them knowing where she is for three years. That's kind of the point of this story for me. <sighs> I just don't understand why this story is being told. This character, our vile protagonist, she doesn't, she doesn't develop in character for me. She's still as selfish now as she was back then. 
So there's no character development. There's no epiphany. There's no understanding for her, in my opinion. Maybe I just can't forgive her. Um, but this, you know, this brings up all those ideas of, you know, losing your body to your children and um, losing your life and not being a person anymore, just being a mum. But is, is Eleanor Ferrante writing this? to give people permission to check out for a while if they need to, to escape from something that they chose. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. So there's, this one passage is where um, this woman um, is explaining to another mother why she left her kids. And the line she said was, I loved them too much and it seemed to me that love for them would keep me from becoming myself. Now to me, that's a freaking cop out. That annoyed me, that line. It wasn't an explanation as to why you abandon your kids. Everybody loves their children more than they love themselves. That's how this, that's what motherhoods and parenthoods about. It takes you over unexpectedly. You know, I totally get that. But to say that you were afraid of losing yourself, this is the thing. We all lose ourselves when we have kids. Every single person on the planet loses themselves when they have kids. That, But is for me, it was a choice I made to have children. I didn't realise how much the ramifications of that, trust me. And I love them more than anything in this world. But I can make a choice to... Be a mum and be an individual. And I don't see why one is, why they're mutually exclusive things. You can do both. I've seen it a number of times. It happens. And I choose to do that. I don't give up the care of my kids. I'm not mean to them. I'm not unkind to them because of I'm unhappy with my decisions. I just think all of this is just a cop out. This woman is just. She's horrible and I don't like her. The fact that Eleanor Ferrante can conjure all of this crankiness up in me shows that she put me in this spot. She gave me this, this scene really well. She, she gave me this 130 pages of, of goodness. So that has to be, you know, that has to be commended. I was really involved in this book. Um, whether that's just because of the theme, but it's, I think it's also because the, the writing was really good and it put me there. But, ugh, this is, this annoyed me. So I'm only going to go three stars for this one. Here's my son. <laughs> Speaking of losing your independence because you have kids, <laughs> they're always around. I'll talk to you soon. Really Sorry, can't. constantly interrupted. That's the way it goes. Yeah, so The Lost Daughter, three stars, because I, I just feel like it was an unnecessary story. It was a cop-out story, which just annoyed me. But the three stars is really for the writing because it really put me on the scene and made me really feel stuff. So, um, yeah, that's it. So I've, I've moved on. The Lost Daughter, we're finished now. So now I'm going to read Fates and Furies. Um, I picked up this book because Olive from a book, Olive, who I love, she is reading this this month. And when she had her September TBR video, I thought, wow, that sounds like a cool book. So I got it from the library. So I'm going to move on to reading this. What are we on? How many pages are we on on this one? 390 something. Um, this is a, a marriage story. Every story has two sides. Every relationship has two perspectives. Here we go again. I hope there's no mum stuff in this. I can't handle any more of that. <laughs> now I'm going to analyse my marriage. I've analysed my parenting style. Now I'm going to analyse my marriage. Whew, it's been a big month. Okay. So, yeah, I'm going to get cracking with this now. And um, do the afternoon shift. I'll talk to you later. <laughs>
it's just started off with a crazy sex on the beach scene. Oh wait, they got married that morning. <laughs> that explains it. Honeymoon sex scene, right out. I'm back. I was just confused for a minute there. <laughs> My marriage certainly doesn't involve passionate beach sex scenes. <laughs> Too much information? Sorry. <laughs> He imagined a lifetime of screwing on the beach until they were one of those ancient pairs speed walking in the morning. This guy's delusional. <laughs> He's lost it. <laughs> he has no idea what's coming. Poor fella. Oh, nice last line. Even still, a third person, their marriage, had slid in. Oh, nice line, Lauren Groff. I'm gonna like this writing.